Welcome back, everybody, to Unconditional Surrender, designed by Salvatore Vasta, published by GMT Games. This is the Me, Myself, and I playthrough of the main event. I'm Dren608. We're about ready to start the next turn, which is March 1941. We need to roll for the weather um, in the cold zone. We have a 5, which is severe. In the uh, mild zone, we have a 2, which is poor. And in the warm zone, we have a 1, which is fair. So, kind of a different weather mix this turn. Let's see how that affects things. Um, there was no declarations of war. Um, Economy-wise, tracks are set. Uh, the British did get to go up to 14 because they got one of their factories back last turn in uh, strategic warfare. And that's where we're at. The Germans are at plus three. Um, they don't have anything to play as far as markers go, neither side. So the Germans roll. A two plus three is a five. So they have a net five, and the British rolled a three. A quick check will show that a five to a three is a DR. A DR on the strategic warfare down here is decrease Germany and add one to the Allied. Uh, so the Commonwealth is back up to six lost factories. The Germans can't go lower than one uh, by rule. So we're out of that. We're to strategic movement. Um, for the axis. Uh, my marker is here. Um, I really don't see a strategic move for the Germans at this point. So I'm just going to put the marker back on the track. I need to put it on this side, I guess. Grab the marker, put it on the track. And that's done. Um, I didn't see one for the the West or for the Soviets, so we're just going to go right on into the operations phase for the Axis. A um, couple of little adjustments here for the Germans. Uh, they're going to spend... Um, they did give one extra to the Italians in the production phase. That's why they started at 27th. So they're going to move the 18th, the 15th, and then they have an armored unit to move up in the north. So the 18th is going to move to there. The 15th, since we won't have to worry about Turkey, two, three, four, five, six, seven. needs to move somewhere. Two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight. Because we'll put him, concentrate our attack here in the south, it looks like. So I'll put him there. Um, and then there's this uh, armored unit, which I spent production points for to go one, two, three. And I don't think I have anything else I have things pretty much set in France as best as they can be till I get a couple more ground units out here. Um, yeah. That looks to be about as good as I can do it. If the British want to come across into France, um, so be it. It'll use up their surprise attack marker. So... The Italian move in the med. Um, they have a couple of weasel moves here, if you want to call them that. The Italians will spend one to move this unit, one to three, four, so that he's in Tripoli. 
Um, and then they will spend movement for this unit. Da -da -da -da. Where do I go? Uh, I'm just going to move him down one there. That leaves me with 11. Then I'm going to do a naval move here. I'm going to put the fleet's going to escort the, sec the two convoy, and they're going to move into C zone 24. I have to pause and say, Mr. Britain, do you want to intercept me? Um, they're not sure exactly where these Italians are going. They already have two sorties, so I think they're going to wait and see if the Italians are going to pick up something to bring to the Middle East, which, of course, is my plan. So, and then two into the Adriatic Sea. That's two sea zones, and then they're just going to go and end their turn in Venice. They each take a sortie marker. And then we will activate the German Africa Corps for two. Yes, I'm going to be historical. Most people use this, use this motorized in, in Russia because it can run faster than the other infantry. But I'm a purist, so what can I say? So this whole mess goes into 23, and then it goes into 24. Now, you might think, well, the British should intercept that, try and stop it. One of the quirks about the game is that since I'm in this sea zone, even if the British were able to interdict me and say, cancel your travel or whatever, the unit will st still end up in Benghazi. The question is, knowing the British are only going to have 12, sorry, 12 production points next turn, I think I want to have them uh, conserve those for actions on their turn and or... Um, uh, clearing of sorties and things so that they can try and make supply much worse for the Italians uh, come the summer months when it will definitely be clear. It is clear right now. Um, I don't think it's worth the combat here. I think it's worth the combat when I'm doing uh, when they're going to try and do supply. So I'm going to let them go and they will end their turn in uh, Benghazi and they will each take another sortie and then to keep these clear, oh, good grief, come on. We're going to move the uh, units out to adjacent to the C-zone so we can keep track of the sorties. And I think that's all I'm going to do for this turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, it's probably going to be a couple turns before I can actually get anything flying with the uh, the Germans. So I have to do supply. Um, I really don't need to have this airplane here in supply, so I'm going to just go ahead and market and low supply, keep my convoy from actually having to incur a sortie for this turn, even though I have production points to burn. Um, just trying to get in the habit of doing things correctly. Um, Romanians don't have to worry about the Turks anymore, so they're going to activate and just go ahead and move um, a little bit closer to hold the the lines for the Germans as we push forward into Russia. So supply-wise, now comes the fun part in the Mediterranean. Uh, should, should I put the Romanians down on? The Huns. So, um, the two units that will definitely be in supply, I have three unsupplied units. So I'm going to do two for sure are going to be uh, the Italian 11th and the Africa Army. 
So that's two for sure. Now I have two I can keep in low supply. So I have Tobruk technically could go to low supply if I have to, if I fail. But I want to try and keep one of these other uh, militia up at least for a couple of turns until I can start threatening the British. So I'm going to run supply from here for the 5th garrison unit. Actually we'll run it, yeah, we'll run it for the 5th garrison unit. And the British will... Uh, decisions, decisions. They would be at a plus, um, minus 2 for the Italians and straight die roll for the British. Um, so... I guess I should, or do I want to wait? I think I'll wait. So the uh, Italians take a sortie for each, and this low supply marker comes off. And seeing that, the uh, Italians will go ahead and say officially that the guys in Tobruk are considered out of supply and put a low supply marker on them. I guess it's on the unit, not the fort. And then the Italians are basically done. Uh, we're going to run into some trouble here because the British are going to have an air unit, and the Italians, if they ship their air unit into North Africa, then we're inviting Force H to come back and play nasty games with me. So that's going to be the Axis operations phase. The West... Um, knowing that the Germans are coming, one, two, three, four, five. So I think the only thing I really need to do is stick the RAF in the Alexandria. I have 14, so I could go 2, 4, I can clear the airplane, 2 convoys down to, and clear up the fleet as well, which is what I think I will do for right now. So let's just not go adventuring. I could try to attack the Italians with the airplane, I'd be at plus five, minus one for the ridge, or I could have it be three, five, two, three, four, five. Could be plus five to plus two. Um, kind of trying to push the Italians out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But then I give the German Africa army a chance to. Dilemmas, dilemmas. Do you want to attack or do you want to just accept the attacks and do the best you can on defense? I'm going to be a little bit conservative here and I'm not going to attack. I'm going to try and spend my production points on uh, you know, cleaning up sorties all over the place. So I am done there. I have to do my supply. Um, this one will supply the airplane. Uh, this one will supply the two units in the desert. And that's all I need to do there. The Russians are done. There is no, no, no one with a no supply marker. Replacements for the Axis. Um, do the Italians right away. They have, uh, I believe, 11. Yes, they have 11, so they're going to spend 10. Two sixes, so they'll bring this one down, and they'll bring this one down, and that one's at three, and this one's at four. We'll bring this one down to one, so that's ten. Uh, the Germans have two to spend on this armored. Let's set this stuff. They're going to flip this armor. So that cost them two. One, two. 
down to 19. Um, they don't have any sorties to do, and I think everybody's flipped face up so that there's, uh, there's no place else to spend things. I probably could have just left people in supply and spent the points on the convoy up there. The use it or lose it kind of gets annoying sometimes for the Germans here while they're uh, once they have everything kind of in place, they can't spend all those points. Oh, I know what I should have done. Uh, I keep forgetting to move the Swedes. Gotta remember to do that next turn. Um, so that they're in Trondheim. I think, pretty much, that I'm done here. So that's replacements for the West. Goes... Basically, it's down here in the med. They have 14. So that would be four sets of three if I wanted. And leave two. Um, at this point, knowing that there's only one marker and the Germans are going to pull it, I'm not going to try and save things. Um, one of the things I can do is I think I'm going to go ahead and do it this way. If I remember right, Yes, it costs five to do this, so we're going to uh, get Force H up. Uh, where's the UK production? One, two, three, four, five. And then they're also going to clear up two sorties here. Fourth. That's one, two, three. Now, normally I would stop here, but like I said, the diplomacy is not going to go our way. I'm not interested in reloading the cup, so I'm going to desorty this down to two, two, three, and then I'm going to clear uh, the Suez one, and that puts me at zero. The Russians don't have any replacements. Uh, there are no upgrades yet. Mobilization, if I remember right, nobody has anything to build. Nobody has anything to build. So we just go right through mobilization to diplomacy phase. Um, the Axis will spend five. Two, three, four, five. Nope, that's only four. Five. Um, to pull a cup from the diplomacy cup. And lo and behold, it is a political success and the cup is empty. The political success will be used to apply to Turkey and put this pro-Soviet marker back up in the stack, and that means the Germans don't have to worry about strange, large miners coming at them from the flanks, at least so far. And the Soviets have five points that they could spend on diplomacy. Um, I think what they're going to do is they're going to go ahead, since odds are against anybody getting anywhere on diplomacy anyway, they're going to put the political failure in a no event back in the cup. Um, And we are done with this turn, it looks like. So I'm going to go take a quick check on the time. And if we've got enough time, I might try to sneak in April 41 as well. Hang on a second, folks. Be right back. Okay, I did a quick check. I'm at like 19 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and try and sneak in... Um, the next turn here. I um, have to do the end turn phase real quick. You'll see in April there's nothing, so we don't have to move anything. We'll go right on into April of 1941. Um, first thing up will be weather. Now remember that the, the special rules about um, the optional rules that I'm testing for Sal means that in, in the cold zone it cannot be severe. Since there's only two choices in uh, March, April, it's either severe or poor, it automatically moves to the other choice. In the mild zone, it cannot be poor. It will either be severe or fair, depending on what I roll. I rolled a one, so it'll be fair, so that's okay. And then in the warm zone, it cannot be fair. It must be poor or severe. So it depends on what I roll. I rolled a number that would normally be fair. That's not going to happen. Roll again. 
a 3. So it comes poor. And there we have the weather for this turn. Now when we get into May, it'll be straight die rolls again. And then in June, it'll be based on what you rolled. Um, since the, the Germans have to kind of prepare for May being clear and having to go ahead and start Barbosa a month early, because you really don't want to do it in a poor weather turn. You want to get as many clear weather turns in Russia as you can possibly finagle in that first year. Um, so I'm going to make sure that everything's set in Germany that way when we get there. Right now we have to, uh, there are no declarations of war. Um, the economy phase, I've already, I reset these offline when I realized I had enough time, so we don't have to do anything. The British did go down to 12 this turn because they had lost a factory. We go to strategic warfare, and um, it's the same as it was before, plus three to zero. So the Germans were all, um, and they still don't have any counters to, to use. Uh, they roll a three plus a three, which is a six, and the British roll a five, which I think is enough. Yes, the British got back one of their factories. They're doing a pretty good job this time around in um, strategic warfare. So next turn, I think the Germans get their submarines back, so that'll probably almost be a guaranteed loss of a factory. Um, So we have, let's just quick quick check here on the Eastern Front. We have three infantry and an armored unit all ready to, with Romanian support, ready to push into Bessabaria. Um, we have an armored and three units kind of spread out, with the 10th being the extreme south. But there's an armored unit and two units plus a possible backup unit from, say, the 6th or the 2nd to come running through the gap of uh, Lvov and the Bug and the Nyster Rivers. Um, somebody will take, we have in the central, technically we have three infantry if I send, choose to send them that way. Uh, depends on where what looks best for the, where the sixth will go. But these guys can push through the center, capturing Brest, maybe getting close to taking on Vilnius. And then in the north, Obviously, these guys' job is to like try and clear out the Baltic states as fast as possible. So we have everything set there. In the west, it's not the best invasion defense, but it's what I have. Um, I really don't want to move the third Luft closer to where he can bomb, you know, send the British planes to hit me, just to cost me production points. Um, so I'm just going to say I'm pretty much done up there with the Germans. I might have something to do down here in the med. Um, I think I'm definitely going to activate the Africa core and move it along. Where's my production points? There they are. Did give one to the Italians. Um, I've become sort of a natural thing here while they're fighting the British for supply. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six to Brooks, seven, eight. Puts them in 54, 56, and then nine. They're going to go ahead and sit in 54. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to sit in 54, 46, I think it is. Um, I'm afraid of the British like attacking the 11th and then cutting supply on uh, the Commonwealth or the the Africa army and me having to, you know, do finagly things to try and um, combat that because he is he will have an air unit. Um, I have tanks units, so he's not going to have huge pluses, but um, he will have an air unit to try and make a sustained offensive against the Italians. So I'm trying to get the Germans there to help them. The Italians will move this guy back into Benghazi just to be safe. So they probably didn't need the 13, much as I could have used it. And then we have to go into supply. Um, as usual, this one goes 1, 2. And that is the 11th in the German Africa are in supply for sure through the convoy in Tripoli. 
Uh, the guy's in Benghazi. Um, I can do two. So I have to try to... Okay, I officially am trying to supply the unit in Tobruk. Um, I have minus one, he has minus two. What's the weather again in... The weather in warm zone is poor. So it'll be an extra minus two. The British would be at a net minus two. I'd be at minus three. Uh, 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 best they can get is a four. I have a high likelihood of getting a one or a two. But is it worth the extra sorties to stop supply here? I think I want to wait till I move. In my turn, I'm going to move Force H into uh, Malta and then maybe maul his supply then. No, I don't want to. I'm going to go ahead and try. Uh, so the British Med Fleet will intercept the second fleet escorting the first convoy. So the British are normally at plus two. They're minus two for sorties and minus two for the weather. The Italians start off at zero. They're minus one for their sorties and minus two for the weather. So minus two to minus three. The British roll. A one. Hey, they're a one. And the French roll, or the Italians roll, a five. Minus three is a two. So we each take a sortie. The supply line is successful. So then this convoy has to have a sortie because it didn't fight a combat. And this guy is considered in supply. Uh, rather than risk any more stuff against the British, uh, at this point, I am going to go ahead and say this guy's officially out of supply. Put a marker on him. These two will draw slow supply from Tripoli, and the front two line un front, you know, two front line units are in supply. So that's the end of my. Um, uh, I didn't have any strategic movements. That's the end of the Axis operations, Western operations. Um, they're really trying to get him to kill the ninth because it eases my problems of, of moving units around and getting the BEF here. So we're going to set it up so I can move the BEF in. Um, I only have two. Oh, the British would have had a strategic redeployment. They would have strategically redeployed the BEF to Cardiff. So, sorry, I forgot about that. I wanted to have them in the same hex as... Uh, is the convoy and the fleet, so that I can uh, move them at some point. So we are done here. The British have to do their supply. Um, they have to do three. So they're going to do two uh, in Suez. You know something, I think I'm just going to go three in Suez. Two frontline units in the airplane. And that's their operations. Russians don't have any, no supply. Replacements for the Axis. The Germans, oh, the Germans would have supplied both units. Because it could be clear next turn. So the low supply marker comes off. It goes away. I don't know why that's there. So... And I would have had two sorties for that, my supply phase. Um, and this counter comes off just in case we get clear weather in May and I have to try and do things. So we are two replacements for the axis. Mostly that's going to be three for the Germans up there, and then um, three down here. Let's see, the Italians only have 11 left, right? Yep. So they're still back at their 11. So they're going to clear this convoy. And they take this convoy down too. And knowing that Force H is probably coming... As a matter of fact, that should have been a move last turn. Um, I'm going to retcon that because the British would have moved, uh, knowing clear weather is coming, and Force H is very effective in 
that they were going to move Force H into Malta. Uh, into Malta for sortie. And that's why I would clear this navy down to give it a, a, an outside chance of affecting combats with the uh, Force H. At four sorties, I wouldn't have bothered to try and interdict his movement because I don't think it would have mattered. Um, the Italian Air could have tried to do it, but then again, like I said, I don't think it would have mattered. Uh, I can bomb it in port as well as hit it in the sea. It's the same concept. Um, we'll see if that was a good idea. Okay, the replacements then was three, six, and four for the fleet, so that's ten. And then the Axis would have, the Germans would have spent three to clear that sorties marker. Take off three more from the Germans. One, two, three. Um, we go to the British, Western Allies. Um, one of the things they're going to do, I spent four here. That's four. Where's my counters? So they have eight left, which means they can do two sixes in the med. Clear this one for three. Oops, that's three. Three. I could clear Force H or I could bring Alexandria down to one. I think I want to bring Alexandria down to one, leave myself a production point. So, like that. Now I have a pretty good shot at trying to interdict supply next turn and maybe slow down any shenanigans that the Germans and Italians try to pull off. That's replacements. The Russians don't have any. There are no upgrades. Mobilization. Nobody has anything to build yet. Nope. This mobilization's done. Diplomacy phase. The Axis will spend um, five just to put some stuff in the cup. One, two, three, four, five. Um, they're not expecting anything really to work out of this, but hey, uh, they're thinking of the future when they're going to invoke the Russian uh, Moscow Treaty and be able to go back to diplomacy, I think. And the Russians will spend five thinking the same thing in case the worst event might happen, so they're going to throw more no events in there. And that will be the April... 1941 turn, I think. They haven't conquered me yet. End of turn phase. Check that. Um, oh, the Germans get a couple things back to their faction track. Um, they get their surface action. So they'll be able to try silly in interceptions again. And they get their submarines marker, which is probably the more important thing here. Or the, one of the more important things, because they'll be able to push the British down again, hopefully. And then we will, starting May in my next episode here, put us back in the corner here. So, this is Dren 608 with the Me, Myself, and I playthrough of Unconditional Surrender's main event scenario. That was May, or... March and April of 1941. Uh, I thank you for watching. Uh, if you feel like it, please subscribe. Or at least leave me some comments to let me know how you guys like what's going on. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.